Right now, taking a live look at the San Antonio School District meeting to discuss plans for the start of the school year. SEISD Superintendent Pedro Martinez is conducting the meeting. You see him speaking right there. We do have a reporter on the scene, and we're going to bring you an update on what was discussed coming up tonight on KSAT 12 News at 5 and at 6, and, of course, on KSAT.com. The USL officially restarted their season Saturday evening. Seven matches have already been played. San Antonio FC gets another few days before they start their second season. The team knows they need to use this extra time wisely to prepare both physically and mentally. And one of the men charged with leading the club on and off the field, Bernie Native, who is developed into a seasoned veteran. Here's Andrew Seeley. It's, it's weird how much you miss something when you, when you can't have it. When San Antonio FC officially restarted full workouts, no one was happier than Bernie native Blake Smith. First of all, just to be on grass again was, was inexplicable. It was just a nice feeling to be, have a soccer ball at your feet on grass. And, um, and then obviously being back out with your, your teammates that um, you see every single day. So that it's like, you know, basically seeing your, your brothers that you haven't been able to hang out with in such a long time. So it was, it was definitely a nice, nice feeling and, and uh, something that I definitely missed. The Montreal Impact select from the University of New Mexico midfielder Blake Smith. This is the closest Smith has been to home in his seven year professional soccer career. And that's been a huge boon during these tumultuous times. I think I've had a bit of an advantage, you know, being, I can't imagine being some of these guys that are, you know, kind of locked up in, in a, an apartment, you know, by themselves. Um, so for me, it's, I've been very privileged in the fact that, you know, I have a house here um, and my, my parents aren't, aren't too far away either. And so we were, you know, on Zoom calls all the time. Um, we have a team group chat on, on WhatsApp. Um, so we're, we're constantly, we were in touch and, you know, if anybody needed anything, um, you know, we were there to, for them to reach out to. And it was tough, but we, we made do. Smith has been all over the United States and Canada, competing in both the MLS and the USL. Now he finds himself in a very different role, using his invaluable experience to help a very young SAFC squad. It's crazy that I'm actually the oldest player on the team, um, being only 29 years old. And, uh, you know, I've never been in that position in my entire career, obviously. You know, I've had several, you know, guys in their 30s. and. So I think it's, it's not necessarily the norm to be 29 to be the oldest guy on the team. So we have a very young team and um, you know, Alan trusts me in, a, in a, a bit of a leadership role. Um, there's a few guys on the team that are in a leadership group. And so we have um, a little bit of say and a little bit of seniority, I guess, to kind of um, give our input and our opinions. And, and so I'm just here to kind of help the process along. It's been a, a fun position, you know, because they, you know, it's a position of respect and, and I'm able to, to help out the younger players and it's something that I'm not really used to so I'm also developing as well in that sense and so it's, it's been fun and it's been uh, it, it's crazy that it's already been seven years and, and here we are you know. Now the only question left how does Smith feel about the team's progress so far? I think it's, it's been really good up to this point now that we're back to full contact able to actually work on everything so I think we're making huge gains in such a short amount of time to get prepared for next weekend. Time to gear up. Yeah, they uh, open up the season next Friday. And we've got some breaking news from that uh, school board meeting. That's right. We were just showing you the San Antonio ISD school board meeting underway. Right now, the superintendent just announced that school is not going to start until August 17th. It'll be delayed a little bit. And then it may be delayed again. And even on September, uh, rather August 17th, that uh, it will be the first three weeks will be a remote learning experience for the students. So we're, we're Keeping an eye on what's going on at this meeting, we're going to have a full wrap-up as soon as they make all of the announcements of what the students there can affect. Yeah, we'll have that for you on KSI 12 right. News at 5, 6, and, of course, on our website here in just a little bit when they're done. You can usually catch SA Live speeding right along. But we're going to slow things down, Mike and Fiona. Yep, today on SA Live, we have a fantastic show. We introduce you to the world's slowest mammal and how you can bring the zoo to you through Zoom. 
and we get dog training tips from a pro, and we hear about a new movie with a four-legged star. Plus, you'll see our own dogs show off maybe how little they know. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, get a taste of the Caribbean. A new restaurant is open up at the Pearl from the owners of Jerk Shack. And it's an Inclusion Tuesday. Morgan's Wonderland is sending Jot the Butterfly out to spread some cheer. Hey, you got some of those sports souvenirs lying around here. We're going to tell you now is the best time to get in the sports memorabilia game and show you an easy way to have experts weigh in on worth so you can cash in. All right, all that and more when SA Live continues. As meteorologist Justin Horn told us about just a few minutes ago, the heat is on in San Antonio. It's important to take the necessary precautions so you don't get heat exhaustion today, especially when you're out exercising. Yeah, remember to wear loose, light-colored clothing. Always hydrate before going outside and try to exercise in the early morning or late evening hours when it's a little cooler. We've got more information for you on how to stay cool right now on KSAT.com. So, Justin, how cool is it going to be? <laughs> Not very cool. <laughs> Uh, 95 right now. We're at 100 in Del Rio. So temperatures are starting to jump up again today. A little cooler today than yesterday, but still near record territory. 103, 101 tomorrow. And then uh, we do cool down into the upper 90s. Cool down in quotes. Uh, with 20% chance rain on Friday. All right. Thank you, Justin. And thanks for watching the News at Noon with us. Mike and Fiona over there, they, they did offer. They offered us some fries yeah, right before share. we're going to go on the air. So we'd Sharing be is caring. Smacking, so, well, but, we didn't want French fries in our teeth. No, we didn't need that. But they got fries and they got some, is it Caribbean or Caribbean? My grandmother said Caribbean. So we'll go with Caribbean then because grandma's always right. So are Mike and Fiona. <laughs> Here they are. As they live, starts right now. At least that's what I'd like to think I'm always right. Anyway, <laughs> hey, if you're having a bad day, this animal's going to turn it upside down. We're going to hang out with the sloth today. And we get a taste of the Caribbean. A new business has opened up at the Pearl. And on this Inclusion Tuesday, find out how Morgan's Wonderland is bringing a little joy to everyone. It's all today on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from the KSET 12 studios, this is SA Live. Oh, look at the little doggy for you. <laughs> you yeah. Hello and happy Tuesday, everybody. Uh, why do you always have to talk like, you boy, you boy, you boy? I'm Mike Osterhage. <laughs> and I'm Fiona Gorsiza, and we are in the middle of the dog days. Of summer, we don't yeah. have to tell you that that this heat will even have you panting. Speaking of dogs, how are your dogs doing with the uh, new little one in town? Have you taken the back seat to Sloan? You know, they have, but they have gained an opportunity to eat more snacks. That was the greatest thing. <laughs> the boys, I mean, everything around the high chair is going to be just right? spotless. You just call them in like, clean up aisle five before <laughs> you even finish that sentence. They are there if they're not there already waiting, you know? so. Your furry friend's ears are about to perk up because we are going to have you think like a dog. There is a free virtual class happening today and Thursday. It's all about dog training. And our Jen Tobias Strusky got some tips from the celebrity canine instructor today. And her fur babies are kind of a big deal. Take a look. <laughs> Well, on this Try It Tuesday, it is all about dog training. Yes, we are all stuck at home. All of us have our fur babies with us. What better time than now? And today we get help from Rover.com dog panelist and celebrity dog trainer, Nicole Ellis. There's actually a 20% increase in pet adoptions, which is huge. Lots of shelters are even cleared out. So as a pet lover, I can't love that anymore. Yes, she's been featured nationally for her dog training and her two babies, Maggie and Rossi, are movie stars. She was adopted from a local Los Angeles animal shelter. Wait, hi to everybody. Yeah, she knows over 150 behaviors. She skateboards, does handstands. She's traveled all over the United States with me doing therapy dog work. And then she also does movie production work. I have a younger dog that will join in one of our videos as well. And he just filmed a feature film that just came out with Josh Duhamel and Megan Fox. Wow. So, <laughs> I know, he's very upset he's not in the interview. <laughs> And today, families can take advantage of a free workshop on VarsityTutors.com, the essentials of dog training. Families are pretty much stuck at home. And we're looking for things to do, whether it's with each other or with our animals. And our animals aren't really used to this either. So this is a great time to train together, engage together, and increase that bond with your dog, which will last well past 
the stay-at-home order. This is Sassy and Juji. Um, oh, how cute. <laughs> so we uh, we don't really do much dog training. So for somebody like, like us, what's the best way to start? Simple, short training. So find a time that your dog's hungry, whether it's at their dinner time. And then I tell everyone like, everyone's like, you must train so long. And I'm like, I train my dogs maybe five minutes a day. I'm busy too. And it's great to involve your kids, involve the whole family. Do you think Maggie would like to show any tricks? Okay, so we're gonna be doing some simpler ones and some little bit harder ones so everybody can get a chance. So one thing, a simple thing we'll be teaching is a touch behavior. Touch, no, touch, good. So that's touching her nose to me. It seems so simple, but I use this to have her touch objects. I can turn into super fun tricks, like Maggie, come here, tell me a secret. And that's taught with a touch. Good job. Can you? <laughs> Good. Another fun one we'll be doing is feet up. I love this for therapy dog work, where the dogs put their feet up on a wheelchair. When you're visiting grandma's house, grandma can easily pet your dog. But it's also fun for adorable tricks. Maggie, come here. Good job. We can take a cute prom pose photo together. Sometimes she needs to play a sad dog. Put your head down. And put your head up. And that's something everybody's dog can learn. Good job. Good job. <laughs> I love it. You're so talented, Maggie. <laughs> wow. She's super excited. And you can see she's loving this. I hope everyone joins in for our fun partnership with Varsity Tutors and Rover.com. It's free and it's live. I love that it's live, right? Can't wait to see all the dogs learning. And I wish I could just rub off some of your uh, skills so that I can just get these guys. <laughs> but oh, I you'll have it. Time. <laughs> By the end of the second session, you're going to be a pro. My dogs are no Maggie or Rossi, but we'll give it a try. For SA Live, I'm Jen Tobias Jutsky. Good girl! <laughs> <laughs> Look at how. That is, so, oh. Oh, that is so cute. Look at how clever they are. Oh. But that's what, I mean, that takes a lot of work. It and does. You, and you got to know exactly what to do. And again, yeah. the two class series starts this evening at 7 o'clock on varsitytutors.com. And you can enroll in the class to take full advantage of this live session with Nicole Ellis. And of course, dogs are welcome to join too. Just head on over to salive.com and click the As Seen on SA Live tab for more information. Now, for more information on them, head to salive.com. Now, on the As Seen on where we provided a link. And we thought we'd show off. <laughs> Our dog's <laughs> skills? I, I don't mind it, yes. Well, I don't know if my, you know, my Tweedledee and Tweedledoodles at home and Max, you know, has what it takes to be movie stars, though. But we okay. want to ask, right? Are we doing yeah. social right now? Right. Social instead of our dogs? Yes. We'll do the social. Hey, what's your, did we, did we skip over that? I think so. Oh, yeah. Oh, anyway. We hey, we're really not paying attention. Anyway, dogs. dogs in movies. What's your favorite dog in a movie? I gotta tell you, I'm a fan of anything with Benji in it. Benji Remember was Benji? Good. Yes. Benji's Adventures. You would go here. Because we there. had a. I love Benji. Because we had a cockapoo when I was little named Benji. So, Aww. but then again, I mean the classic Old Yeller. Mama, Old Yeller just Don't saved your life. Cry. I know, Don't I know. Just, and, and Homeward Bound. Oh my! Oh. The Incredible Journey. The, the first one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Original. Oh. And uh, Don Amici was the voice of the, the Golden Retriever. That makes me want to cry. Anyway. Of um, course you would know that. I know. <laughs> that makes me want to cry. <laughs> okay, so now our dogs. Yes. Uh, we don't think they're going to make it to Hollywood. I don't think they're going to call. You never know. Eh. Take a look. See what you think. <laughs> see. See. <sighs> okay, okay. Good. Enough. Yeah, okay. That's it. have a strong bark, but that's okay. Okay, ready? All right, uh, let me already sit. So, okay, you dance, 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 come in circles, come on, you can do it. Come on, dance, dance. Uh, okay, that's a pretty good one. Okay, one more, one more, here we go. Uh, sit. Hey, very good, okay. Sit, good boy. You get a treat, good job. You get a treat, good job. All right, who can shake? Who can shake? What a good boy. Okay, down, 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 buddy. Down, down. Good boy. He was, he was kind of swiping. 
Was he? Good. I know. Giving you high five. Cash was just going to do every single trick he knew until he got that treat. He was like, what do you want me to do? Sh shake, down, I'll do it all. Sit, what do you need? <laughs> When I had a dog years ago, I got books and you'd see the books and like those, you know, classes coming up tonight. So, okay, dogs are man's best friend, but the real best friend, of, oh, it's yeah. food. Yes, the owners of Jerk Shack have opened up a brand new restaurant serving fresh Caribbean style food. Me Roti gives you the option of bowls or wraps to get you to choose what you, and you can choose what you want on it. They give us a look at the new shop inside the food hall at the Pearl and give us insight on the challenges of opening a new business during this time. All right, so this is me, Rhodey. It's our newest uh, Caribbean concept. Uh, it's focused on roti, which is a Caribbean flatbread. Uh, here you can choose to make it inside of a bowl or inside of a wrap. Uh, the option is endless, you know. Uh, we have a sign up. You can make about 33 different thousand ways uh, of the roti. It's all up to you. So I am Jamaican born. Uh, I moved here when I was five years old and uh, it, it's a part of me. You know, every place that I went when I was in the military, I always tried to cook and show people uh, foods of Jamaica. So uh, to me, this is just exposing it on another level. So a few months ago, we were um, asked if we had any ideas of a concept that we would like to bring forth. Uh, so I presented a few ideas. Uh, one of the ones that stuck out with the pearl is uh, me roti. Um, for me, uh, it was just a little more work, you know, coming up with the menu and trying to figure out how it's going to be eaten. Uh, this is something that you normally make in your home. Um, so turning it into a production, that was probably the biggest challenge. At the same time, uh, we had hit uh, GQ's uh, 16 top restaurants in America. So the Jerk Shack was super busy at the same time while we were trying to work on here. Challenges that we've had leading into the pandemic have been just resources, the menu. The original way that I thought the restaurant was going to run is not the way that we're running it right now. Uh, you know, we wanted people to be able to see the food and scooping it as they were telling us. And now it's kind of like select all your options, we'll make it and give it to you. And so our vision kind of changed of what we wanted it to be like. So at Me Rodi, our requirements are just a little different from what the bottling department is doing. We're not offering any curbside or phone orders or pre-orders at the moment, just because we're still trying to work it out. You know, we're just working through the whole process until we can smooth it out and then we can offer more options. I would say what I'm most excited about is everyone trying something new. The endless options that you can make within the wrap or the bowl, uh, that's what I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see the combinations, um, hear the feedback, and you know, really just expose my culture to another level. Right now at Me Rodi, we're following the hours of the bottling department. The best way to reach us is either to come up here and order, or you can contact us uh, through the website or Facebook or social media. They sent over a couple of these bowls for us to try, and which one do you have? Okay, so this is a Rodi bowl, and it's got jerk chicken. It's got shredded carrots, cucumbers, pickled onions, crispy shallots, cilantro, hot pepper, mango chutney, um, it comes with, of course, a side of red beans there. Uh, and let me see, because I, 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 this looks like it's got a little bit of a kick. It, there, there's a little bit, I mean, not too much, but just kind of you know it's there. And I've got the uh, coconut rice, peppered shrimp, cucumbers, shredded cabbage, uh, some shredded cheese, roasted corn, green onions, crispy shallots, chimichurri, garlic. Mm. Um, and then there's mm. red beans right there. But again, the, the, fresh, the freshness to it all Ooh, is really good. good. The Ooh, difference good. in all the different flavors and everything is very, very tasty. And mm. mm -hmm. That rice is really good. That rice that, is That's amazing. good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. For more information on me, Rody, just head to our website and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. I take a bite just and I'm about to read. About 1.30 on the show, we slow things down with Zoom Imagination and going to make a new friend. And it's an Inclusion Tuesday. We tell you how one butterfly is spreading joy. That's next on SA Live. 
Happy Inclusion Tuesday. Morgan's Wonderland may be closed for the rest of the year because of COVID-19, but that doesn't mean they can't deliver joy. They're bringing the happy to the front doors of people here in San Antonio who need a lift during the pandemic. Joining me now is Brooke Kearney, Chief Mission Officer at Morgan's Wonderland, to tell us how you can get involved. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, how are you? Oh, doing well. Tell us how has the park's closure impacted Morgan's Wonderland as a whole? Well, although we're not open in the traditional sense, this has allowed us to be creative and to pivot because our mission of inclusion, that doesn't stop just because our doors are closed. So we're being extremely creative about how we can continue to talk about the importance of inclusion and to continue to spread joy in the community. So what are you working on right now while the park is closed? Right, so in addition to a lot of community partnerships that we are focusing on, we're also pivoting to do a lot of virtual things like a lot of other nonprofits in the community. However, we're focusing on our mission. So we're doing different uh, activations, so to speak, via virtual uh, conversations, virtual events, as well as focusing on continuing to grow and continuing to expand our reach. And tell us a little bit about the Delivering Joy program. Right, so Delivering Joy is one of our new programs and we're really excited about it. Uh, one of our favorite things when people come to our park is the joy that we see in, in our guests' faces. And one of the biggest things is when they get to meet Joy, our mascot, Joy the Butterfly. So we thought we need to go beyond Wonderland and bring joy to you. So we've come up with a safe way to bring joy out to those that need it the most right now in our community. So how does someone get that special visit from Joy the Butterfly? Yeah, so I would encourage you, if you're on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, please go online and like us now so that you can see an awesome video about it, as well as get information and stay updated and a link to the nomination. Or visit us online at morganswonderland.com slash delivering joy for the nomination form and some more information. So, so oh, what? Oh, oh I'm, do they I'm know, so sorry. They do knew they know we were doing, doing this? Live, they knew we were doing a live shot. I, ooh. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Oh, we got to visit. <laughs> oh, hey, Joy. This is awesome. See, even the joy that joy brings to me, I can't imagine how it's going to be when we go out into the community and see all of our friends again. Joy and I are just, we can't wait to see you guys again. Oh, that is incredibly, incredibly cute. What other Beyond Wonderland opportunities do you have available? Yeah, so again, please follow us on our social media and on our website. And then in addition to that, we're moving forward, guys. We've got our Morgan's Wonderland Sports Complex that is uh, completed, almost completed. And we've got our Morgan's Wonderland Camp that's in advan uh, advancing along. We've just got so much. We're not stopping and we're not going to stop until our mission of inclusion reaches the entire world. Oh, Brooke Kearney, thank you so much. Now you can you nominate it. someone for a visit from Joy the Butterfly and learn more about the Delivering Joy program online at morganswonderland.com slash delivering joy or give them a call at 210-495-5888. The deadline for nominations is July 15th. Brooke, thank you again so much. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Still ahead, interact with animals in person or virtually, how you can visit with a sloth. And next on SA Live, hey, get your testosterone back in shape, guys, with Male Medical Group. Well, do you have a lack of energy and motivation? It could be more than just the old quarantine blues. 23 million men experience similar roadblocks that can keep them from feeling 100%, but it doesn't have to be that way. Mayo Medical Group is turning back the clock every day for men here in San Antonio. And Marco Zambrano is one of the group's lead patient counselors. Good afternoon, Marco. Good afternoon, how are you? I'm doing very well, thank you very much. Okay, so you're healthcare professionals for men. So what kind of issues do you help guys with? All kinds of issues, really uh, hormone related is our main thing. Um, but, uh, you know, you were right a while ago when you said the, uh, this whole COVID-19 thing, you know, it's keeping everybody at home. Um, everybody's, you know, putting on that a little bit of weight, you know, that COVID weight. That's what I've been calling it lately. I think I got some myself a little bit. <laughs> but um, it's definitely something that doesn't have to be, though. Uh, definitely something that we can that we can work on. OK, yeah, so, because obviously the, the quarantine's not helping issues at all. But low T is something we've always heard about for a while. So how can testosterone replacement therapy help? 
Well, testosterone replacement, basically what we're doing is that we're actually just like the, just like it says, uh, we're, we're replacing um, what's not there. So basically what's lacking, um, you know, filling up those, those dead spots, you know, um, our testosterone goes, uh, gets lower as we get older, um, basically on a, on a downslope. And uh, what we do here is we just replace what's not there um, and just make us feel, you know, good again, normal, like we, like we used to when we were a little bit younger, you know, uh, give us that, uh, that more vibrant and uh, more energetic, uh, you know, everywhere out and about when you're in the gym or, um, or at home right now, actually. <laughs> um, and even, you know, when you're, you're with a wife or, or whatever, you know, uh, just energy all the way around. A lot of times guys are maybe too proud to, you know, admit something's wrong. What do you say to guys that aren't sure if they want to reach out? Oh gosh. I mean, this, this is so common right now. Um, people coming in here and it's actually a lot more common for people to actually come in here and say, you know, God, I just, I didn't want to talk about this, you know, but uh, I just, I can't handle this anymore. I just, I need to do something about it. I think people more now are realizing that um, there is something that they can do and, uh, and are moving forward to, to uh, remedy that. So with everybody being at home now, there's a lot of things you can get done, but some guys just aren't really motivated to do all those, the honeydew list around there. And you can help with that, right? Sure can, you know, give us a call. If you're out there, I mean, you're at home just doing nothing, watching TV, you know, um, you know, watching this show, you know, get up, get, you know, do something about it. If you don't do anything about it now, nothing's ever gonna get done and you gotta keep on feeling the same way. Um, my advice, you know, get up, do something about it. That way you can have the energy to, to you know, move forward and, and go and hang out with your family after all this is done. Hopefully it's done pretty quick. Okay, and you've got a special going on right now for the first 10 people to call or text. Yes, we do have a special right now. First 10 people, um, uh, $100 gift card. Actually, we're giving out right now, and it's a $39 consult. Okay. Uh, so take advantage of that. We'll take care of you. So once again, that special is the first 10 people to call or text will get a consultation with a medical provider plus level testing for just $39. That's usually a $300 value. And on top of that, you get a $100 gift card to apply to any of Mail Medical's services. So give them a call at 210-361-1203 or go to the website mailmedicalgroup.com. Good chatting with you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So ahead, now's the time to get in the sports memorabilia game. We share some tips and maybe help you hit a home run. And next, we show you the slowest moving mammal on Earth and how you can visit it. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, Aww. when it comes to <laughs> hello animals. Zoo Imagination is one nonprofit in town making sure to educate the public with animal presentations while caring for many of the furry and feathered friends who can't make it alone in the wild. They're starting a new concept as the world continues to change. Zoom Imagination with virtual presentations. Today we introduce you to Yogi the Sloth and there's so many fun facts. You know, did you know that they could swim? I think I right. think Robert has told us that today. And again, we introduce you to Yogi and a lot more fun facts as well. Hi, my name is Robert Trejo and I am the co-director of Zoom Imagination. Uh, it's a wildlife outreach here in San Antonio. We are a nonprofit organization dedicated to uh, teaching uh, people of all ages about animals, wildlife, uh, and all kinds of fun things that you might encounter in your own backyard. Uh, this beautiful animal that is holding on to me, his name is Yogi, and Yogi is a two-toed sloth. He is eight years old, and he came to us from a rescue in Guiana, South America. When he was a baby, he was in a tree, and they came and cut down acres and acres of the rainforest, and he was one of hundreds of animals that had to be rescued, uh, unfortunately. So, but he was he was there for a little bit, for a couple years, and then they transported him into the United States, where he had to live uh, the rest of his life in a zoo, a zoological facility, or an outreach program. Um, and so that's why he's here with us now. Yogi uh, is an animal that is related to the ant eater. That's what they're related to. And there's two types of sloth. There's a two-toed sloth and a three-toed sloth. Now it's kind of hard to see, but uh, you can see the two claws on my left shoulder there. And on the back, he's got three claws. 
Now his cousin, the three-toed sloth, is the one that you see in the movie Zootopia. That is a three-toed sloth. Now three-toed sloths are also active during the day. Uh, where Yogi here, the two-toed sloth, are active at night. So they are nocturnal. Now I just woke him up a little while ago and he's okay. He doesn't mind waking up throughout the day, but they spend most of their time uh, looking for food at night. Now they don't see very well. Sloths don't have very good eyesight. They can see maybe 10 feet in front of them. Then it gets a little blurry, but they, they use their nose, just like he's doing right there. They use their nose and their hearing to help find their way. Now sloths are leaf eaters. They're mainly leaf eaters and that's what they that's what they live on in South America, which is also why they are so slow. If we all eat just a bunch of leaves, we would just be as slow as a sloth. But we do provide him with extra nutrients. We give him that fruit and vegetables. He likes walnuts. He likes pistachios. And he also eats avocado as a treat once in a while there. So right now I'm feeding him walnuts, uh, and that's what he's feeding on right now. Now they spend their whole life hanging upside down. They can't walk on the ground. If I put Yogi on the ground, he would just crawl. Now they can crawl from one place to the other. It doesn't hurt them, but it's not very safe for them. They, so they really can't protect themselves against predators when they're on the ground. However, hanging upside down from a tree, they can lunge out at their predator with, with their claws or they can bite. They have very sharp teeth. But most of their defense comes from camouflage. If you look at his hair, it looks a lot like the bark of a tree. But over time, they will turn green. And the reason why is because moss and algae grows on their hair. All that humidity, all that moisture, all that rainfall in the rainforest, it's perfect ingredients for moss and algae to grow just about anywhere in the rainforest, even on their hair. And that protects him from his predators. Now the two biggest predators of the sloth is the jaguar and the harpy eagle. Those are the two biggest predators. So if they can't see him, they can, they, he, he'll be able to protect himself. The other thing about sloths, a lot of people don't know this, but if you were to put your nose right up to a sloth, they don't smell, they don't have an odor. Believe that? They are designed like a sponge. What happens is if they absorb the environment. So for instance, if we were to put Yogi in a pine tree, he would then begin to smell like a pine tree. So when you stick them in the jungle, they absorb the jungle smell. So they smell like a tree, they smell like moss, they smell like algae, and that also provides that needed protection from their predators. Now sloths can live anywhere from 25 to 30 years. Now in the natural environment, they may not live very long, maybe 20 years, just because of deforestation, predators, or anything else. But under our care, there's a good chance that Yogi is going to live a while longer. Now you can see how he's kind of hanging upside down there. They're always looking upside down. That's just how they do it. Now a lot of people don't know this. <laughs> a lot of people don't know this, but sloths are good swimmers. They can float easily and they do like a little doggy paddle. And that's how they get from one place to the other. But if you want to learn more about sloths, you're welcome to visit our website at www.zoomagination.com. We do online classroom programs. We also do small group parties. We do birthday parties. So if you're interested in having us come out, please feel free to contact uh, us at zoomagination.com with any other questions you might have. Uh, Zoo Imagination is taking donations to help care for the animals while they continue to social distance. That means, of course, they aren't going out and about in their usual presentations. And uh, for more information or virtual one-on-one -on -one encounters, head to SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. A lot of folks spending more time at home, you may have finally gotten around to cleaning out that closet, the attic, the garage, and perhaps you found something with a little more than just sentimental value. Brandon Steiner, founder of CollectibleExchange.com, joins us to talk about the uptick in the buying and selling of sports memorabilia. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, here in New York, and uh, everything's kind of bunkered down. And I think everybody went home and has been home for a few months. and. After a couple of days, you're, at least my wife did, said, Brandon, you need to clean out the garage, closet, <laughs> basement, sports room. So we went, you know, we, we didn't really think the site, you know, we just launched this six months ago, collectible exchange is like a form of eBay. And all of a sudden, I guess everybody had the same idea. And uh, 
it's been booming. You know, just there's a lot of people that are interested in buying old vintage stuff, and unique stuff. I think, you know, the collectible thing's a little unique. It's a little different because people want verification. They want authentication. They've had stuff given, left to them. They don't know what it's worth. How do you recognize if something that you find actually has any value? Well, on our site, we actually broadcast in a much bigger way the actual authentication, so you know your authentication. And if you're comfortable with it, you can then buy it from the seller. But if you're not comfortable with it, you can actually require it to have another level of authentication, which gets sent to a hub, and we have an independent authenticator look it over. Also, a lot of people are not sure what they're buying and what it's worth, or if they're trying to sell something, not sure of the value. There's a click-through on Collectible Exchange where you can click through and say, I've got this. And by the way, I like to know what it's worth. And I do a, I do a show online called Man Cave Millionaires Do, which we broadcast all people's items and tell the story. You can get that on YouTube as well. What questions should somebody ask if they are thinking about buying or selling something? Well, you got to you you, you remember when you're thinking of selling something, there's a bunch of ways you can put it into an auction that we have online. You can actually put it up on the site with a make an offer. Um, also, there's a lot of people sitting with their collectibles under their bed in their closet. So a lot of times people just ask me, what can I do with this? I want to have enjoyment out of it. And we'll show them how to frame it or put a case in or build something around this so you can actually enjoy this collectible. Just remember, sometimes it's a trophy, it's a plaque, it's a couple balls that are left, so you kind of have to collaborate it together to enjoy the piece. I don't always suggest to people that they should sell their items, but they should enjoy their items. And uh, that's something we help you. We frame people's items as well as have an assortment of cases as well. Collectible Exchange is, is a site that really exists for the collector and the fan. The other cool thing is you can go on our site in the next couple of months and buy collectibles from your favorite athlete. Is there anything that's really sought after right now that everybody's in the market for and I need this? I think that, you know, it's surprising. I mean, you always never know what's going to happen with young people as far as whether they're going to leave this business or move on to something else. But even the young ones love the vintage stuff. They love the stuff from the 60s and 70s. I may have to see if my uh, first edition of Sports Illustrated will pay for my kid's college. So how can people uh, get a hold of you? What's the website? <laughs> Well, it's collectibleexchange.com uh, or cxstuff.com. I'm a LinkedIn guy, so just follow me on LinkedIn if you want to message me a personal question about something you have. I try to answer them all. And by the way, if you go to my website, Collectible Exchange, I've written three books, and any one of the three are free through the end of July. Fantastic. Brandon, nice chatting with you. Great information. Excellent. Thank you, and have a great day. Have a safe day. You too. Well, a smile can really brighten your day, especially during these times. Oh, yes. And even though we're in, you know, in the middle of a pandemic, a smile with beautiful teeth is not out of your reach. Jed and I talked with Dr. Alfonso Menares and his wife Yesenia a couple of months ago, before all the social distancing, of course, to see how they're changing lives and smiles. Why is it important to have that good smile? Well, you know, the smile is a very important part of everyone in their lives. You know, people that smile look happier healthier, younger, smarter, and there's a lot of people that stop smiling because their teeth don't look very good, or they have cavities or gum disease, or they're missing a few, or they don't have any teeth. So when they stop smiling, you know, everything changes around them. They hold back, their self-esteem goes down, they don't want to go to places, and it really changes somebody's life. I want everyone to know that there's a lot of things that can be done. People don't have to live their lives hoping mm -hmm. and suffering. You know, we can help, and there's a million things that they can do in dentistry nowadays to get the smile they want. Well, I feel like we even take that for granted just to be able to mm. smile. So this full mouth reconstruction is what you are specializing in. So tell me a little bit about That's that. That's correct. Mm. You know, I specialize in seeing those people that, that have no hope, that they have been hurt, you know, no, nothing can be done for you. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we, we replace their teeth with dental implants. It can be done in a very effective, predictable way. Mm -hmm. Patients come to our office, we have a lot of good technology, they get sedated, so, you know, they're sleeping, and by the end of the day, they wake up and they have a beautiful smile because it's like having a blank canvas. Yes. You know, we redesign every tooth, the size, the position, the alignment. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like recreating somebody's life again. And, and the stories we have are amazing. Well, you have a photo here that we can see and you can tell me a little bit about that. So here's the That's photo. correct. That's mm -hmm. a great example of one of our patients. 
conditions that if you can see the teeth are extremely worn down. So there's really nothing left to do there. There's nothing to fix. And we replace his teeth with dental implants. Now he can, he can eat, he can smile, and he has a wonderful self-esteem. And this other lady, believe it or not, I mean, she's biting down, but her bite was, was really you know, uh, troubled. And, and look at what we did with wow. the replacement of her teeth with dental implants. So can wow. you imagine how she is right now? Amazing. It's amazing. Wow. And you have your lovely wife who helps <laughs> with this transformation. Yesenia, Mike is over there with her to talk about how they get this all done. Wow. Right. So it, this is more than just uh, false teeth because you have to really personalize these, right? Yes, correct. Smiles are very unique and this is why we custom design every smile we create for our patients to perfectly complement their facial features, their age, gender, and also their personality. Um, with this information and also the help of amazing technology, which is um, face 3D scans, we design and create the smiles. But it's not as though that information is being sent off to some lab somewhere. No. You are doing, you're basically do, holding their hand through the whole thing, right? We do everything in-house. We also hand paint the smiles mm -hmm. to achieve a more beautiful and unique look. What's the feeling that you get when somebody that has not had good teeth or any teeth at all, all of a sudden they have that smile, that, that smiles back, their life's back to them? It is very re rewarding because not only you're changing their smile, you're changing their, their entire life. And it, it is very important that both um, the art and the science come together so you can have a balanced harmony and a beautiful natural smile that is going to give you the perfect picture look, uh, which is a confidence okay. and a beautiful smile with Wonderful. with health and beauty. Thank you, Yusani. And you've got a, a very good special going on right now. The first 20 people to call are going to be getting a free consultation valued at $350. Just call Stone Ridge Dental at 210-610-5479. That's 210-610-5479. And for more information on Dr. Menaris, visit his website, drmenaris.com. Thank you both very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Hey, tomorrow on SA Live, homemade avocado ice cream. Why people are falling in love with this local treat shop and what they make that you can't find anywhere else in San Antonio. Plus, does your family have a fire emergency plan and does it include the pets? You might be leaving out an important member of the family and not even realize it. We've got tips to make sure the whole family is ready for an emergency. All right, earlier we asked you, what's your favorite dog movie? And Linda says, Lassie, come home, an oldie but a goodie. Timmy and June Lockhart is his mother. Love my dog is going to have to go with Turner. Oh, oh, I love yes. that one. This is not your room. Jacob says, I love Beethoven. I oh, think. Beethoven I dogs. Think, yeah. Okay. All right. Win Dixie, there are so many to choose from because of Win Dixie. Okay. Adam's, oh, oh he's, on, he's on your team with Old Yeller. Oh, yeah, Adam, you saved your mm -hmm. life, Mama. <laughs> Nene says, Beverly Hills Chihuahua and all dogs Aww. go to heaven. And again, Lassie. Hey, we are going to leave you with this Inclusion Tuesday with a song by the Inclusion Fusion Show Choir of Morgan's Wonderland. Have a fantastic day, everybody.